Welcome to Clark County Today. I'm your host, David Medor. Our guest today is Tom Navalis. He's the fellow that has, uh, how you say, Samuel Adams. Mm -hmm. You become the character of Samuel Adams. That's correct. And I haven't seen you in character, so, so I'm, this is all new to me. Inform me, what's the motivation behind this? What's the, the message? What are you trying to do? Well, I think you started out you know, right from the beginning. People have called me a character for quite a few years. So when we started looking at uh, different opportunities to bring history to today, uh, it first really came about uh, about two and a half years ago. So you uh, want to bring history to light. You want to correct. have people remember this character. This, That's and right. You picked Samuel Adams because you must really feel he's uh, someone that is a, a model to follow, mm -hmm. somebody you admire. Right. Well, Samuel Adams was real interesting uh, from a lot of different perspectives for me. Number one, he was a very devout Christian. His, he was called the last Puritan. That was one of his uh, names given to him. Okay. He was the, the father of the revolution in that you know, he understood the British Constitution probably better than anybody else. So when it comes to understanding our Constitution and the fact that he was a, a contributor to writing the Articles of Confederation, mm -hmm. which set our first Constitution you know, in formal writing, which was interesting, and brought all of the colonies together. So he had a real forefront in that activity. So uh, he was a very active forefather. Absolutely. The other thing was he was a businessman. A lot of people don't understand where his business came from and his history of what his family. What kind of business did he have? Well, what was interesting is that he was a lawyer. Now, when he really started out, his mother wanted him to become a minister. But when he went to Harvard, he started reading law and studying the Constitution, and he changed to law, and his mother was very disappointed. Mm. And he said that, you know, some things to that effect. And at that time, even attorneys had some disparaging names, but his mother was kind to him about that. You said that. he switched to the Constitution? He, what, as, he, what he switched to was from being a, a minister uh -huh. to becoming a lawyer, but he understood the English Constitution very, very strongly, okay. better than most people did at that time. And what did lawyer training include back in those days? Well, at Harvard, which he went to at the age of 14, which was amazing, uh, it included the real biblical background. So at Harvard in those days included biblical studies and clear understanding of what it meant to have values and morals, as well as it included the study of the law. So it's it, not like the Harvard of today. It's the same school, not. actually same, yes. same buildings. You look at the cornerstone mm -hmm. of that. You do know what that cornerstone says there in Harvard? I don't recall what it says. But it but says some yes. basically a very different yes. uh, mission yes. than what that school has today. We, they've drifted substantially away from those roots. Correct as was the, the, the state itself as it came into formation and where we were as a nation at that time. So that was, you know, the two real elements for me was that Samuel Adams was key in his belief system. He was very uh, outspoken in his community. We were talking about being a businessman. I'm a businessman as well. And so he understood all the nuances of business. He understood uh, economy very well because of his father. His father actually helped start a land bank and it was ruined by the government. A when, land bank, what do you just define a, that? What is a land bank? A land bank was a bank where people at that time was open uh, to, uh, to start up from uh, people within the colony. So they invested their own money. And again, money at that time was hard money. They would which, invest their money. In other words, the colonists would purchase from shares. this land bank? Well, they would purchase shares, just like today you can purchase shares, but those shares had real meaning to them in that it had gold and silver as the backing. Okay. And similar to today, where then they issued paper money out uh, so that people could then come in and redeem their gold and silver. But the way that the bank operated at that time, the government in England became bankrupt because of their war with France. Hmm. So it, they turned around and says, oh gosh, we want to take and grab a hold of these banking institutions within the colonies. And when they did that, it actually bankrupt the banks, just like today, the banks became bankrupt mm. by the way with regulation and the way that they came in and started to subsume uh, the assets of the various banks. So, so whoever had money in the bank when it went bankrupt in that day, is that, that your, your money was gone, Oh, right? absolutely, absolutely, and that's what happened. In fact, uh, they tried to take all of Samuel Adams' father's belongings, including the house away. 
But mm -hmm. because the sheriff of that day knew what the law really was in the Constitution, Samuel Adams petitioned to the sheriff and says, you cannot have this property. It belongs to me. It was deeded to me. And it was clear and free title. Mm -hmm. So by standing firm on that belief, they couldn't come in and take his property, although they wanted to. So, so it, was, it was a close call, but it, was able, yeah. it stays in the family. That's right. That's right. And there were a lot of things that Samuel Adams did uh, in taking and getting people to understand truth and understand that truth on freedom and liberty. He was very, very strong on individual liberty. He was under, strong in understanding business, economy, and uh, then what it meant for liberty of the whole people. Because Boston really, you know, it, it was the forefront in many, many ways of what happened when it came to developing this nation as it is. So he had a very good background when it came to the principles to form a nation mm -hmm. uh, by, and that those principles included not just simply just, uh, these days. If you're if you're a lawyer, that's not necessarily considered to be you know, a businessman. Right. And uh, I guess that was a, a more holistic uh, integration back then. Understanding being self-employed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And in today's environment, you know, we hear of Samuel Adams beer. Well, in fact, beer. That, beer. Beer. Yes. Right? Samuel okay. Adams beer. Some people have heard of it. I haven't yeah, heard of yeah. it. Samuel Adams beer is one of the you know most famous beers you know today. Well, even at that time, Samuel Adams beer was he became he was a malter. That was one of the enterprises that his father had left to him was his malting business. So the Samuel Adams beer of today really did start with Samuel Adams uh, is back that right? at that Goes time. The, that That's far right. back. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, and he understood shipping because his father actually was the first person to organize longshoremen, if you want to call them that, at that time. And uh, those unions, though, were for the, the rights of the people and the workers in a different way than they see the rights today. Instead of just taking and trying to take things over and ask for more, what they were actually doing was trying to build the business environment uh, in a way that was profitable to all, not only the business owner, but it would be profitable to those that worked in the shipyards and all so of that. So more like a grange? It was more like a grange environment, correct. Okay, because yeah. the unions today are very different than they were the back Absolutely. then. Unions today, um, uh, in, in many ways, you, know, you have members that are, they don't have a choice, they need mm -hmm. to, they're, they're mandated. You want to work there, you, you got to be able, you have to right. join that union, you have to mm -hmm. pay dues, and then the leadership of that uh, that union quite often is not necessarily reflecting what the values are of the constituents, of the, of the members. Yeah. There can be a, a division there. That's right. That's right. So he understood that. And, and I think that gets to the whole essence of the, the Founding Fathers is that anything that we're seeing today, you, you have many people say, oh, enough of this Founding Fathers, enough of this Constitution. Uh, well, in reality, they had the same issues then as we do today. Immigration, uh, economics, uh, the whole idea of monetary reform, the whole idea of preservation of individual liberty and freedoms as well as then what does it mean to have a good safe and solid society. So because uh, Samuel Adams had so many uh, thoughts on those, there was a lot of uh, I guess he contributed, he's quite a contributor. He is, he is also quite a prolific writer, right? Yeah, correct. And his writings, we can still read his, his writings today, and they, yeah. it, because we have so many of the same issues, it, we're not the first ones to argue these, these arguments. That's right. We had to go back and find out what the founders mm -hmm. thought back then because uh, things worked very well. We had a great, mm -hmm. <laughs> for the first 150 years of this country, 100 and whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. to the point where now this is the first generation where it looks like maybe the next generation is not going to have as good a lifestyle, a quality of life, as, as the present generation. Yes, that's very true. So something has changed. Mm -hmm. we, it would be a good idea to find out what those writings said mm -hmm. and be able to make sure we're not violating those same principles that helped us to prosper for all these years in the first place. That's correct. And that's what really got me stimulated to do Samuel Adams and take him on as my alter ego because exactly of that perspective of those writings. He has four volumes of about 600 pages that have been collected and that's not even all of them because many, a funny story was is that people didn't understand how valuable his writings would be to posterity. So uh, there was a hard time in the late, uh, well about 1830s or so and the family had a number of his writings 
and uh, one of the, the the butlers in the house started using his writings to start fires oh, in no. the fireplace. Oh no! Yes, others came in. This was first, after they were published, so they're just copies. <laughs> no, of they them, weren't or even this published. The these weren't even published. These were original manuscripts. So we've that they, lost some we've of lost some of his writings, exactly. Oh. But still, in, in total, there's let's see, over two thousand pages of his writings uh, that you know I've poured through and continue to pour through and then there's an additional 1500 pages of written about him that was written in the early 1800s so it was first uh, a score of writing not where we're seeing multiple writers year after year writing from someone else's writings mm -hmm. but from original documents including uh, Governor Hutchinson and, and uh, Bernard and a number of the others that had all this other discourse with him are all included in these writings. If people want to know, they want to learn without having to go through four volumes of mm -hmm. all these pages, the, uh, a, a good reference where they can find out about his character, about his principles, about what he was, felt passionately about, what's a good digestive way uh, to be able to learn that? Is, is there a source where it's compiled where you can be able to pull a lot of that into there, a short... There's a number of different sources out there and there's a new book that came out uh, on Samuel Adams that even Glenn Beck has uh, brought out about uh, a year ago. You, mean, you know the name of that? Or? Samuel Adams and uh, By... uh, I can't recall the author's name. Okay, you know? we'll have to look that yeah, up. Yeah, we'll have to look it up. So I there just... is a book that you recommend. On yeah, I think that's a really biography. good one. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, and a number of the others uh, that are out there, but we're the real interesting thing is uh, bringing him to life and having that discourse and, and bringing issues, real-time issues. And that's one of the things I do with that persona is to take and, and when I'm asked to speak at a different engagement is to actually ask uh, that organization and group, what is your intent? What are you trying to communicate? And then go into those archives of Samuel Adams and bring that to real time. So, so you don't have a standard uh, kind of a thing that you follow. Mm -hmm. Uh, you you will take the the problems they're trying to solve, the issues they're trying to address, mm -hmm. and you go back and study and find and pull from those studies uh, relevant information on that, and mm -hmm. you'll take on the persona of Samuel Adams yes. and address those. Yes. Okay. So you actually dress up in yes. the garb that looks okay. Yeah. Is there actually much of an appearance difference? Is your facial features and hair and all that? Is there? Well. Uh, the hair, no. The facial features, he, he had more weight on him than I did. He was a little more pot-bellied and all of that. So, and the so other you can thing, add that was, fake, right? You yeah, don't have to go out and... I don't have to do all of that. And, and, and he was <laughs> clean-shaven, but I use that as a you know 21st century uh, excuse to say that I can take and now uh, grow the mustache that I couldn't in that day. Well, interesting. I wish that we would have let you know that you could have worn that <laughs> outfit in this interview.